Hello everyone, welcome to Go opening video number two. Today we'll study Go opening from a professional game between Chinese player Huang Yunsung and the Korean player Bian Sun Il. Black starts up with double star and white follows up with the same. Next move, black decided to play the 3-3 Joseki. So this is the most popular Joseki in the professional world, as well as in the amateur world. So um, if you are a very old school player, uh, that's no problem. If you like to approach, uh, you like to play out the frameworks, that's no problem. Uh, but it is kind of important to possess some sort of knowledge about you know, how you can deal with the 33 Joseki. So if you don't know those, uh, those are covered in my Joseki series from video one to eight, I believe. But don't worry, if you haven't watched those, we will be reviewing some of those knowledge as well as its extension. So the players played out the simplest uh, Joseki where black takes the territory and white gets the influence towards right side. White follows up uh, with the same thing. So white decided to grab a corner back to keep a territorial balance. It's a very uh, common Joseki. The next move, black plays the small knight. So this is where things gets very interesting is at this point, we need to kind of understand uh, what is a big move. Um, so here, black can play one of the two things. Black can still play the remaining 3-3 Joseki. Uh, this will make the game very ordinary. So uh, likely white's going to play out like this. Um, and then it's an okay move, but it's just not a, I guess, a 9P idea because you would have two of your stones facing each other on the second line. Um, so there's absolutely no chance for black to develop this side. Uh, as black, you usually don't want to give up the possibility for development this early in the game. Instead, we see black plays a more active move. It seems like a very uh, ordinary move, right? That every, everybody knows that this is a very big move to enclose. But there's a lot of theory behind it. So if black plays the small knight on the other direction, it would be slightly worse because now uh, we have some sort of uh, repetition on this side. Instead, what black played in the actual game was a lot better. This move not only limits white's potential to develop towards the right side, but also expanding um, black's potential on top. So in opening, one of the most important things is to have a stone that does most if effective work possible, right? So if we can have a stone that achieves one job, that's fantastic. But if you can achieve two jobs, then that's even better. Right? Sometimes you can maybe even achieve three things at the same time, then that would be an excellent move for you to play. And that's the idea of opening, is to play as effectively as possible or efficiently as, as efficiently as possible. That's what this move is doing. So the next move, white decides to show the hit. Um, this is an excellent move. So. So it's hard for amateur levels to manage, but this is a, a move with very deep ideas and it's also proposed by AI. Uh, the idea of this is to suppress Black's development on top. And also this is looking at just blocking at N3. So it's possible for Black to ignore this move in some cases, but in this game, it's probably not a great idea. Let's say, for example, black approaches, then white's gonna block down. And all of a sudden, white's gonna have two walls facing each other, and there's a tremendous potential in the middle for white to build territory. In the actual game, black pushes up. Here, before that, I just wanna point out that if white plays the small knight, 
This is a excellent move for an amateur level player. However, this move would be a little bit problematic under the eyes of professional. The reason being that it's only accomplishing one thing. So you're only protecting your upper left corner, right? It's not like Black's enclosure. They look very similar, but Black achieves two things and arguably three things in fact. So he protects the corner, expand himself on top, and also limits White's potential to build on the bottom. Well, when we look at White's extension over here, um, it's not trying to build uh, towards the right side because we have a very low stone on the right side. It's very difficult to build with a second line stone. It's also not limiting Black's potential to develop on the side because Black wasn't even planning to develop on the side because Black already has a second line stone over here. Then our small knight is only achieving one thing really, that is to protect our corner on the upper left. So once again, if you want your stones to do multiple things, and that's exactly how you improve your opening actually, is to have your stone to be as efficient as possible. That's why we have this shoulder hit over here. Black pushes up, that's the correct defense. Uh, sometimes you would also have this crawl. Uh, both defenses are, are very good. So in this case, white has a couple choices. White can follow up. Uh, this is the correct follow up as a Joseki for white to just hop up. It limits black's development over here and expands uh, black's development uh, white's development over here. It doesn't look that, like a move that generates value immediately, but later on, uh, let's say for example, later on if white does want to develop, white can hop back, right? So these two guys will make this stone a lot stronger and therefore make this area a lot stronger and a lot harder to invade for black. So these two guys have a lot of value in that sense and also it's limiting black's development. That's not what White has played in the actual game. White is a very territorial player, and then he decided to make a split move. So once again, we have this idea repeating itself. Uh, this move is achieving a couple things. First, it threatens Black's Black's three stones on top. You know, uh, temporarily Black's very safe, but but we can already feel like a little bit of pressure because of this move. So this move is a threatening Black's three stones on top and also destroying Black's uh, Moyo on the right side. And it also aims at two things. One is this, uh, so let's say for example, if Black pincers like this, White's going to play a Knight's move, right? So just a side note, this when you have this, this kind of uh, situation, you don't want to play the two space extension. Uh, you actually want to play out the knight's move. The reason being that when you play this, black has a, a combination over here, right? This stone is threatening the EL, is threatening this kind of two space extension, right? So later on, black has all kinds of uh, very, very strange uh, type of invasion like this. For example, right? This is a concrete way for Black to uh, show some aggression over here. So the, the reason that this variation works is that if White cuts, Black extends. So if White connects on the one side, thanks to this stone, Black's able to pull the stone back. And then these two guys are probably dead. If white plays on the other side, then we're able to um, capture the stone over here. And white is still not alive. White only has one knight here, and then he has to run. That's why we don't want to play the two space extension. That's kind of like the detailed reason why you usually don't want to play the two space extension uh, when it's like this. And this happens a lot, right? After the split, 
uh, you want a follow up here, the correct follow up is for you to play a knight's move. So this time, if black tries to play the combination, uh, we can follow up. And there's no obvious weakness for white, right? If you play this, I can just hop out, right? There's no problem over here um, for white. So that's a, a very important detail, I think, for most of my viewers, right? Because I see a lot of times that, you know, uh, amateur level players like to follow up with this, but there's actually a very severe follow up that I just mentioned for black. In the actual game, black decided to ignore that. Uh, that is okay because temporarily the three, don three stones on top, they're okay. And then, um, and then this stone, you know, you can make the extensions you want. Uh, but, but now what I'm saying is that uh, black is trying to put pressure on white stones. That's also an excellent idea. White follows up with h5. So black cannot ignore this move, right? If black plays a follow up locally over here, then white can hop down. And this stone is in a very dire situation. Black defends the stone. This is a very nice move. Does two things. Once again, it saves the h3 stone and then it protects all the territory here. So at first glance, we see that it seems like this exchange is a bad exchange for white, but actually white has uh, ideas behind it. In the actual game, white decided to honey. When black honeys, white attaches at b5. So this is where uh, I think it's uh, it's like the highlight of this series, uh, series ideas, I would say, is that to combine what we have learned in Joseki, uh, we want to combine that with opening. So I've said that there are many Josekis to choose here, but only very few of them would work in this situation. Let's say, for example, black plays this uh, letting himself split in halves kind of variation and white's gonna connect and all of a sudden we can see that and you, you see that this white's uh, black stone h3 and then there's a D, uh, d2 stone over here uh, they're not doing a lot right over here while white is all interconnected especially now you look at the h5 stone you all of a sudden realize that this is an excellent move that suppresses black and actually expands white towards the top. So this is a very acceptable result for white. In the actual game, black pushes and then white now cuts. So there are uh, a few main variations, right? The first one is for black to Atari, right? This is one of the main, main variations. But if black actually chooses this variation, so this is how the variation is gonna play out. And then when black plays this one, um, white can now just hop out. So all of a sudden we see the same problem. The problem being that white's direction is it's just too good, especially with this H5 stone. We see a huge influence towards the top, right? But then now when we look at black, it's a one space extension on the third line, plus another one space extension on the fourth line, plus a bunch of stones over here, they're kind of useless. So uh, this outcome is not gonna work uh, for black, right? So black would be falling behind if he plays without thinking about directions and ideas. Another possibility is for black to extend out to fight, but actually white can just follow up uh, with the F4. And then all of a sudden we see that still this magical exchange of H5 against the fourth line stone is helping in this fight. Now black is facing a lot of pressure for these two guys and there's a Hane at E2 that black needs to deal with. So this is a terrible fight for black to pick up. 
So what used to be a main variation does not work in a new situation. And this is the amazing part about Go opening. So in the actual game, Black decided to play a niche variation. We said that another main variation is for Black to play here. When white Ataris, black Ataris on top. And when white connects, uh, black can now Tanuki and then uh, play something else. So black's idea is more or less similar to that. So in the actual game, black decides Atari, white extends, black Ataris, and now white turns an Atari. White obviously wants to kill the stone at d6, but black can run right now and the latter is not going to work uh, for white so they definitely read that out um, in the actual game white turns and then black pulls the stone out uh, and then start a fight over here right this is very important uh, to not give up the stone at d6 i would you know, a lot of my viewers would probably be tempted to give up the stone in d6 and just play somewhere else. Uh, but but let's say if white uh, gets a chance to, let's say, add a move here uh, to reduce the strength of this stone, then all of these white stones become an influence. But when black drags the stone out, like what he played in the game, then both groups are cut off and they become insecurities. So this process of uh, turning your opponent's uh, savings into debt, uh, that's definitely had, that definitely has huge values. White now follows up with a beautiful knight's move. Uh, this move is going to expand expend himself on top and also put pressure on the two stones. So once again, a move that does two things. Black needs to get out right now. This is more or less a, a forcing move. If black, uh, I don't know what's, what black's gonna play, if black plays somewhere else when white's gonna completely capture uh, black. So black cannot allow that. Black needs to Kosumi out. Uh, and then white follows up with a tiger's mouth. There's a sente towards a corner. Black needs the Atari here. So black does not want to take here because when white honeys, this is a sente because black needs to extend to make a life. Uh, and, and this shape uh, gives white an eye and a lot of flexibility. So whenever we want to fix a dead group, we want to put a lot of counter pressure onto our opponent. And at this point, white needs to connect the stone back, right? So if he doesn't, there's a connection problem. So white Kosumi back, and now this becomes a fight, right? The fight of these two groups against uh, Black's group in the center. And then we would end our uh, opening over here, right? So from this opening, uh, we can tell that, I guess one of the most important lessons that I learned is that in Go opening, you want to play moves that that multitasks, right? So you want to make a move uh, and hopefully it does more than one thing, right? If it does more than two things, then that's an, that's just a perfect move, right? If But if it does more than one thing, uh, that is already like good enough. Uh, for you to to uh, not fall behind or even lead in the game. So when you play in the opening, try to make your moves as efficient as possible. Try to avoid repetitions. Um, and then try to choose your Josekis such that you avoid repetitions. And this is a perfect game that illustrate you uh, that very important idea in Go opening. All right, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, give a thumb up if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel to not miss any further uh, Go opening videos like this. And I will see you guys next time.